look at this smooth straightened glossy hair i mean that to me looks so beautiful hey what's up it's your girl cash hi i'm in my pink bob ombre fantasy today and you know what there's a good reason that i'm wearing such a short practical length today and that is because i'm going to be getting my hands active as I show you my favorite wig styling tips. Now I know that working with a human hair wig can be quite intimidating. Uh, you know, I get it, I get it. It's an investment. Some pieces can be quite expensive. Uh, so what we wanna do today is I wanna take you through all of my different techniques for how to style a human hair wig. But before we get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of everything, I just wanna tell everybody that human hair wigs uh, generally, mine at least, are all uh, uh, are all 100% human hair. So when you style a human hair wig, just remember that anything you can do to your own hair, you can do to a human hair wig. So with that out of the way, let's start off with some of my favorite tools for styling wigs. So what I wanted to show you first was my favorite kind of combs. And I know that sounds really basic uh, because everybody owns combs, but knowing that different combs create different effects is really, really important. Now to get something as silky and smooth and straight as this wig here, I love just a rat tail comb. Now I'm sure you have something like this at home. I use this really basic one from Con Air. And the reason I love it is for two reasons. A, this little rat tail, you can use a rat tail comb or a pin tail comb, but what this will do is this allows you to create your parts really easily in your hair, so I think it's essential just for that. And this type of comb with these narrow teeth on here really allow you to smooth out the hair. It won't create any kind of volume and it just places the hair so beautifully down that it's my number one for getting silky straight hair. And I actually use this in combination with a straightener. I'm gonna show you that technique today, but I'll show you that a bit later. The next comb that I wanna show you is this boar hair comb. But the reason I love this comb is just because if you wanna create volume and you've teased out hair and you wanna get it looking smooth and beautiful, this will allow you to smooth out your hair really beautifully without disrupting volumes. So this is more of a brush for voluminous hair. Now the last comb that I wanna show you is this gold iron hot comb. Now I know it looks kind of crazy because you can obviously plug this in, but what it will do is this area up here, this little gold area will get quite hot. You can adjust the temperature on some. There are some really affordable ones where you can heat it up on your stove. I probably wouldn't recommend that. I would definitely recommend getting something with an adjustable heat setting on it. So that way you can obviously adjust the heat to your preference. But what it will do is that once this section up here is all hot and warm, you'll actually use it to really flatten down hard to reach hairs that you can't normally get with a typical hair straightener. So you guys know what a hair straightener is. They are not the best uh, just because of the width of them. You can get really narrow ones, but even still, I struggle to really get right in there. And the top of this wig was actually straightened with this, which just puts it down and heats it up and smooths it out. And it looks, well, you tell me, I think it looks amazing. But that is it in terms of combs. Now you don't need all of them. You just need whatever suits the look you're going for. Okay, now I'm gonna show you some of my favorite products that you can use on your hair when you are styling your hair or doing whatever you wanna do with your hair. So the first product that I'm gonna really recommend is going to be hmm, a heat protector. So obviously when you are styling your hair, you're applying heat through whatever hot tools you're using. You're using a straightener, you're using a curling iron, you're using this you know, hot comb, whatever it is, you're applying heat. And most of the time it can be quite hot. I mean, I wouldn't be applying any of that to my skin. So when you're applying it to your hair, you gotta be careful. So a heat protector is essential. I'm sure some of you guys are already working with great heat protectors. So one that I actually recommend, now this is a drugstore one, and I'm going to recommend it just because I actually think it really works quite well. And you can see by how much of the bottle I have used, 
um, and this is just my most recent one, but it's this Garnier Fructa style flat iron perfector. Now I love it just because A, the smell is really cute, but aside from that, it actually really does, I feel, protect the hair. I noticed that this in comparison with other heat protectors, I don't, I, I don't think I ever smell that gross a uh, hair burning smell, which can get really bad. And I think maybe it's because it's more of a, I don't know, I like to apply a quite a liberal, liberal, um, a lot. I like to apply a lot uh, onto my hair when I'm styling my hair. So maybe that's why, I don't know, uh, but we're actually gonna use this today, so I'll show you how it works. The next product that you obviously have to have is some good hairspray. Now this is one of my favorite hairsprays. It's from OGX. It's the uh, Shea Sleek Humidity Blocking Hairspray. I love this when I'm creating straight hair looks and I'll actually apply this to the hair just before I straighten it, just to make sure it stays dead straight and just kind of locks in everything as well. So it's a good thing to use when you are using uh, before you use hot tools. And also once you've done with the styling, if you're making like a really beautiful big curl moment or whatever it is, obviously hairspray is really important to lock all that in. And the last product that I'm gonna show you is a hair oil. Now I love hair oils to create just that little bit of extra moment at the end, just to make that hair extra sleek and glossy. Now, if you apply too much of this, it will look crazy and you will look oily. So you got it, like you don't need to use a lot of this. You can use like literally a little pea-sized amount and you are done. Rub it through your hands and then apply it to your hair and you're done. Like that is literally it. Don't touch it. Don't do anything else. This one is the Kerastase Elixir Ultime uh, and a whole bunch of stuff in French. But th this is a, a, a one that I love using. And honestly, you can buy one of these bottles and it will last you a long time, like a long time. So trust me, this is probably worth, you know, investing a little bit into, but this is my favorite right now. Finally, this is probably the biggest investment stuff, the actual hot tools that you'll be using on your hair. Now, out of everything that I recommend that you actually do invest in, it's actually the hair tools. Make sure that this stuff is good. Read your reviews, go out, trust, uh, you know, listen to whoever you trust and buy tools that you love. This isn't the place to save $10 if it makes a big difference between tools. Just do what you have to do. Now, a lot of hot tools can get quite pricey. Typically, the drugstore ones will start at something like $30 and, you know, work their way up to the sort of mid-range ones, which you sort of find are about $150. And then you get to really expensive hot tools, which are $400 plus. Now, the tools that I love using are these dry bar tools. Now, I tried this a couple of years ago and I tell you what, when I say that this changed how I did my hair, it changed how I did my hair. Now, I've bought a lot of hot tools. I bought GHD, I bought obviously these dry bar ones, I've got some Dyson ones I'll show you later, uh, but dry bar hot tools are it. I don't know what it does in terms of locking in the humidity into the hair or the moisture in the hair. But I always do notice that when I'm using these hot tools, the hair is significantly less frizzy than normal. And whether it's dry bar or something else, definitely get hot tools that have adjustable heat settings. It's in here, you probably can't see it, but these dry bar ones have a plus and minus little button and just on the screen here, I can choose my heat setting. Now, I will typically not go over 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but I know that they can go up to 450 and some hot tools will go beyond that. Really, you do not need to be going over 350 if you were just straightening a typical human hair wig. So anything more than that, I just wouldn't recommend it. But you do need to make sure that it's adjustable. Otherwise, you tend, you can get tools that will just blow it out on heat and you don't even know what heat you're applying to it. So if you do find a hair straightener or hair curler that you love, then make sure that it has an adjustable heat setting as well. Okay, so you can see that we have a little friend here. 
what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be styling her from wet because I know that, you know, when you buy a wig uh, from anybody else, they always come really beautiful the first time you buy them, but then you wash them and you want to get them back to looking as amazing as they did straight out of the box. So what I want to do is I want to take this one from wet and this one's actually for a customer and we are going to style her together. Now, before we get into anything crazy and I show you any tools, we need to put this wig on the mannequin properly. Now you can see that there is some saran wrap or glad wrap on here. And the reason I do that is just to protect the wig block. That is super important. Otherwise, you know, sometimes the moisture from the wig can soak in because these are canvas and you can cause some moldiness and stuff like that. Whereas that's never the case here because we always saran wrap our blocks. And then we want to secure the wig to the block properly so that we don't ruin the lace. As you can see now, it's quite casually put on. There's no real sort of like structure to it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to get her and we're just going to align her on beautifully. We're going to make sure that the center line of the wig block aligns with the actual wig itself. And once she's in position, I actually just put one in the top very casually like that. So we're gonna take that out, out really quickly in a second. And then I grab some ribbon like this. And what I will do is I'm actually going to place one of these pins. Now these are just T-pins, regular old T-pins. And I'm gonna place a T-pin through maybe the center of the ribbon. And I'm going to find that lace and I'm going to place that pin. I'm going to pull the, pull the lace down a little bit tighter. And I'm going to put that pin right in that center line that runs through the wig block like that. So now we have some ribbon and we have the T-pin like that. And what I'm doing is I'm securing the lace down with this ribbon so that the lace is secure and does not break because obviously the lace is so fragile and it's one of the, you know, first giveaways that you are wearing a wig. So you want to make sure you are always looking after your lace. Make sure you take out that top pin. Um, but now that if you pull on this lace, which nobody is going to do because that is bad for it, what is going to happen is that uh, pressure is going to get evenly distributed across all of these pins and across this ribbon as opposed to pulling on the lace and ripping it. Now, she's looking a little bit crazy, so we want to section her off before we blow dry her. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our rat tail comb and we're going to section off Maybe, you know, the top half of the wig like this. We're going to grab a little uh, clip like this and we are just going to place her up like that. And you can kind of see the section that we've made there. And now she is almost ready for blow drying. Now this obviously depends on how long your wig is. If your wig is really long, you might need to make quite a lot of sections. But this one is a 12 inch bob that's already been cut and obviously colored and now we're going to blow dry her so i love to use the dyson air wrap just because it's easy it has this you know blow drying uh auto uh, uh, twisting ability and i just think that just makes my life so much easier it's definitely not the most cost effective tool i mean they start at 500 dollars or something uh but it has made my life you know really easy if you have a basic blow dryer and a comb feel free to use that but really we can get going so this is just like human hair like i've said so you can treat it just the exact same way so let's do it Okay, so she is now blow dried. Now you don't actually have to do that step. You can let them air dry if you want, or you can just, you know, use a hair dry. You don't need to go through a whole blow dry. But now that you have seen that I've blow dried it, it looks exactly like what you would get at a salon, which looks really beautiful. And honestly, you could leave it there if you wanted to. But I just want to show you how to get a really crisp, 
cut, slick, smooth, you know, straight style. So what you would normally do is you would go through and you do it for the rest of the hair and then you would resection uh, just like we have before you get into straightening. But because I wanna show you how to do this, we're just gonna do it on the same section here. Now that we are done with that, we're gonna move into straightening. Now to do this, you're gonna need your favorite rat tail comb and you're gonna need your favorite straightener and make sure that it's on and set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I said, you don't need anything more than that. We are going to grab our hair protector and we are going to spray only really the sections that we need because really what happens if you overspray everything, by the time you straighten one section and then you work your way around to the other section, it's gone dry. And that really isn't the fantasy because the heat protector is meant to be a little bit moist for it to work. Okay, now this technique might look a little bit crazy just to start off with, but I promise with practice, it gets easier. Now you're gonna wanna grab a little section of hair and grab your rat tail comb. You're gonna put that through that in with one hand. And with your other hand, you're gonna use your hair straightener and you're just gonna quickly lick the hair twice. And what you're doing is you're getting the hair ready for heat. So if you go straight in and just go bam and just blast it with heat, you are going to damage the hair. This just really protects it and makes it nice and you know, healthy and smooth and soft. And once you've licked it twice, you are going to go through and give it the good, good straightening. And that, you know, really doesn't take too long for that section. And if you want to go through a second time and give it that straightening. Now, the reason why we use the comb is because with the comb, you are separating all the little pieces of hair and you are making sure that everything in there is individually getting affected by the hair straightener as opposed to straightening in clumps of hair. And I know this has happened to everybody at least once. Uh, so this is really why we use the comb. And I tell you what, it really does change the game. Focus a lot of your heat protector and your energies with the straightener on the ends of the hair. Cause that's the stuff that's the most sort of delicate and the most, you know, prone to damage. You can give it a little curl at the end like that. And I'll just show you what that looks like. I mean, honey, Honey, look at that. Give it a quick little comb, just to make sure that, that is all beautiful, nice and smooth. And I mean, she is looking so beautiful, so smooth, so soft. And once you've done your whole head like this, that shouldn't take too long at all. If you, you know, get used to that technique, just grab a little bit of this uh, hair elixir or hair oil. Oops, it's locked. Grab a little bit of this. Put a little tiny, tiny amount. Like I can't, I can't even show you what's so tiny, but it's like a pea size. Just work it through your hands and then work it through the hair, through all the sides and just make sure that it's in there nicely. And what you will find is with a little bit of attention and love, you get the most, mm, look at this, smooth, straightened, glossy hair. I mean, that to me looks so beautiful. Okay, so those were some of my tips on how to style your human hair wigs. Now, I use the straightener. I showed you that tip just because I know everybody wants that glossy, beautiful, silky hair that comes out of the bag. So that's what I showed you. But you can use your curling iron. You can use your crimper. You can use your hot comb. Use whatever you like to make sure that you get the most effective look and feel that you are going for. But at the end of the day, treat your hair delicately, treat it kindly, but just remember that it is hair. So everything you do to your own hair, you can do to a human hair wig. Now, I hope that that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if there's any questions, if you have anything else that you wanna know with a human hair wig and what you'd like to see in my next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and my Instagram will be, I guess I'll put it right here. Uh, and thank you again for watching. Until the next video, bye.